you flip through the book entitled Ye Old Book of Enchantments, Causes, and Cures. The first half contains a list of enchantments. These do not interest you as you have no desire to inflict inconvenience upon others. However, the Cures section does capture your curiosity. While browsing, you spy a promising paragraph. You approach the workbench for a closer look. You toss the earrings into the beaker. You toss the sickly yellow flower into the beaker. You strike the blade of your sword against the flint stone. It sparks and the wick catches a light. You watch, fascinated, as the two unlikely objects melt under the heat of the magical flame. You stir the mixture carefully with a white feather. It soon dissolves in the hot liquid. This is the sword of the first king of Daventry. It dates back almost 1,000 years and has been passed down from king to king since that time. Try not to damage it. A magnificent clear crystal is embedded within its hilt. You managed to dislodge the crystal that had been set within the hilt of the sword almost a millennium ago. You feel a tinge of guilt and wonder what all the past monarchs of Daventry would say if they saw you damaging ancient crown property. You drop the crystal in and watch, amazed, as the green liquid slowly seeps into it. Heed now these words. Crystal, perfect. Green is thy hue. Restore, correct. Guard well my form. Preserve, protect. You recite the words correctly, line for line, and sure enough, only a brilliant emerald remains in the glass beaker. You quickly blow the flame out so as not to overheat the emerald and cause damage to it. Picking it up gingerly, you're amazed that the emerald took virtually no time at all to cool. As you direct the sun's light through the emerald at the snake, you behold a wondrous transformation. Before you now stands a magnificent winged horse. Thank you for freeing me. A horrid enchanter transformed me into that legless thing after I refused to be his steed. That was quite a gamble, to refuse an enchanter. True, but I could not have accepted, even if I had wanted to. For I am a disciple of the Cloud, and can serve no land dweller. Disciple of the Cloud? What does that mean? First, tell me of what you seek up here. You take a deep breath, then explain about the Door of Destiny, the Gems of Nature, and your present quest to locate the Growth Gem. So, you seek the air gem? Yes, that is right. You know of it? Most certainly. But you will not be able to reach it by any means available to you or any of your kind. I would gladly take you to it, but alas, the enchanter took and hid from me my bridle. Without it, we could search for a thousand years and still never find the cloud spirit. Where did he hide your bridle? I do not know. Perhaps a clue may be found in that blackguard's abode behind me. 
What is this spirit you speak of? The essence of what you seek. It passes through us as we grow, all through our lives, though few are ever aware of it. You will know soon enough when I take you to it. Why do you choose to serve this cloud spirit? It is my destiny, and I must fulfill it, just as you must fulfill yours. I was not aware that I had one. All of us have a destiny. Some are predestined, others are determined by choice. I believe yours to be of the latter. You don't have anything else to say to the steed. You hear footsteps approaching. Uh-oh, the enchanter has caught you in his lair. He twirls his hands, aims them at you, and then utters some words under his breath. You feel a tingling sensation all over your body as the enchantment attempts to transform you into whatever the enchanter has fancied. At the same time, you also feel the comforting energy of the emerald shielding you. The Enchanter's twisted smile turns downwards. He scowls at you. There is a look of panic on the man's face. He does not dare breathe. I hereby order you to depart from Kalima forever, never to trouble its citizens again, lest you were in the fullness of my wrath. The Enchanter looks baffled. You sigh inwardly and try again. Leave! If you come back, then you will get it! The Enchanter nods frantically, as much as he can without cutting his own neck on your sword edge. He gestures quickly with his hands. You notice that some writing has been engraved into the wall. You read the inscription. The engraving on the wall reads, In row of stones that number six, half and a pair from left do pick, quell then my spell, avoid the tricks. You unroll the magic carpet, lay it on the ground, and sit on it. The carpet rises into the air again. The carpet begins to descend. You bend over and hold the emerald above the stone so that the sun's light channels through it. Incredible! The rock has transformed into a silver-studded bridle.
you take the bridle. You unroll the magic carpet, lay it on the ground, and sit on it. The carpet begins to rise skyward. As you reach down to get the carpet, it vanishes into thin air, without even so much as a puff of smoke. You slip the bridle over the horse's head. It whinnies its approval. Come, Come climb, climb upon, upon my back. back. Hold on. This will be a little accelerating. <laughs> <laughs> 